Okay, so in this example, we're going to look at some uh, methods, functions that are used to work with arrays. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to run this so we can see the output here. Okay, cool. So first thing I'm doing is I'm generating an array object. So this is, again, like another course name. So I'm generating an array that holds each component of the course name. Um, the first method here is dot .join. So what dot .join does is it joins all of the elements in the array into a single string. And then the argument specifies what to place between those elements. So here we're adding a space between each element. If I took this out and reran this, now it should run everything together, right? Because we're not having it include a space. We run that there. Okay, um, obviously you could use something else, like we could put in like a dash or something. So there's it, there it is with a dash. Okay, so that's that. Um, dot push adds a new element to the end of the, a new element or new elements to the end of an array. So here I'm adding spring in 2019 onto the end of the array. So if we print that, we get two more objects there. So that's push. Um, so adding elements to the end of an array. All right, um, reverse will basically reverse the order of the elements in the array. So here we just see it just reversed all of our elements. Note here that when we did this dot push, it did m manipulate or change the array in place. So the, the two added elements spring in 2019 are carried along in the subsequent operations. Okay, and then lastly here we have um, showing how to use a mathematical operation applied to every element in an array. So that's done with this dot apply. So we're basically doing math dot max, so this will return the max dot apply, and then this should return the largest value in the array. So we're basically applying this max to the array element, so the largest value is 9. Okay, so let's look at ways to apply like a function to every element in an array. So I'm going to get rid of all this and we're going to pull in some more examples here. Okay, so um, oh, let me do a save here. Let's see, this is yelling at me. I'm not sure why this is yelling at me. Let me just refresh this. Redeclaration of let. Oh. I think that's because, oh, that's why. Because I'm reusing the number here. Um, we'll just have to run these. Well, actually, I'll just run them one by one for now. Okay, there we go. All right, so I have an array of numbers. Um, this add one, so I'm basically creating a function called add one. It takes an input value and adds one to it. Now this is a function. If I want to apply that function to every element in an array, then I can do that with this map method, which is a method for arrays. So I'm basically saying num.1, map, and then map what? So you're basically going to run the add one function to every element in the array and spit it back, right? Note here I didn't have to put any parameters because there aren't any required parameters here. So if we run that, we should get back a new array that just adds one to every element in the array. So that's what this dot map is doing. It's applying a function to each element in the array. All right, so let's get rid of that and look at another example. So uh, this is, well, let me get it in here first. Okay, so this um, this is again is applying another function. So we have our, a list of values. Our function is add gt6. So basically, it will return values if they're greater than six, and not return them if they're not greater than six. Okay. So then again, to apply that, now instead of using map, we're using filter. So we basically define a filter within this function. And then to actually run it, it's going to go through each of those elements in the array and only log back the ones, or, or only return the ones in the new object num2 if it meets this uh, query or criteria. Okay, so if we do control S there, print, 
we can see we only go back seven and eight. So that's the use of this filter. So basically we're applying a function here as a filter and we're only returning the features that meet that, uh, that query or filter. All right, and then lastly here, control copy. So now instead of using um, instead of using the filter, we're using the same. It's the same setup, but now we're using this every. So let's see what that does. So if we run this, Control S, and then run, we basically get back false. So basically, what every is doing in this case is is testing to see whether every element in the array meets the criteria or the query, or is every element in the array greater than six. If it's not, then it's going to re if so. If at least one element is less than six, less than or equal to six, I guess, then um, then it's going to return back uh, false. So if we change it to something that was true, like we could do one. I know this name doesn't really make sense now, but that's okay. Then we should get back true because they all are greater than one, right? Um, so every is basically a test for determine ev every element in the array. Re meets that criteria in contrast what we looked at lastly which is filter only returns the elements that meet that criteria